So hello everyone. In this session, we are going to discuss about linear approximation. Linear approximation is also known as linearization or local linear approximation. It is also known as tangent line approximation. Okay. So whenever we have discussed about tangent line, you have seen that a curve f of x is in the Cartesian plane. And if we consider a point x1 comma y1 on this curve, then we can think about a tangent line that is passing through this point. So here we have a tangent line. Let's say this tangent line is denoted by L of x. So, so we can see that this curve f of x is lying very close to its tangent line near the point of tangency. So if we try to zoom here, okay, so we will see that the graph of this function at this point is looking more and more like this tangent line. So this observation is the basis for the method of approximation. So we can find approximate values of any function based on this method. So whenever we have discussed about tangent line, you have learned that the tangent line that is passing through x1, y1 point, its equation will be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we can write here that y equals y1 plus m times x minus x1. So here m is the slope and x1, y1 is the point of tangency. So you know that if we have a function y equals f of x, so we can input x1, y1 point here. That means where we have y, that is y1. And where we have x, we are plugging x1. So this x1, y1 point is the point of tangency. Don't think that this is the first derivative. This is the functional value, okay, y1. So y equals y1 plus m times x minus x1. This can be written as y equals y1 is now f of x1 plus m times x minus x1. So you know that m is the first derivative Okay, so m equals first derivative at x1. So instead of m, we can write a prime of x1. So this is the linear function, which is actually a tangent line. Instead of y, now we can say l of x we are just considering that y equals l of x because l is the line tangent line so that's why instead of y we are considering l of x so l of x is equal to 
f of x1 plus f prime of x1 x minus x1 so this is called the linearization of the main function f of x at x1 we can write f of x that is approximately equal to l of x so this is equal to f of x1 plus f prime of x1 times x minus x1 so this concept will be applied to linearize a function okay so we can consider any problem let's say we have to find the local linear approximation of f of x equals square root of x at x1 equals 1. So the problem is find the local linear approximation of the function f of x equals square root of x at x1 equals 1. We can also say find the linearization of f of x at x1 equals 1. We can also extend our idea that we can approximate or evaluate the square root of 1.1 and we can compare with the exact value of the square root of 1.1. So we will try to evaluate the value of the square root of 1.1 by using the linearization technique. So let us start. We have the function f of x equals the square root of x. So if we input x1, that means f of x1 equals the square root of x1. That means where we have x, we are just plugging x1. The linearization is L of x equals f of x1 plus a prime of x1 times x minus x1. So f of x1 is the square root of x1 plus a prime of x1. So we need to find the first derivative of the main function. If we differentiate the square root of x, it will be 1 over 2 the square root of x. Now let us plug x1. So first derivative at x1 is 1 over 2 the square root of x1. So 1 over 2 the square root of x1 x minus x1. Now the square root of x1, if we plug the value of x1, it is 1 plus 1 over 2 the square root of 1 x minus 1. So finally, we have found L of x equals the square root of 1 is 1 plus here it will be 1 over 2 x minus 1. This is the linear approximation of the main function the square root of x. So the square root of x can be approximately equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 x minus 1. If we have a look on Desmos, then we will see that the square root of x, its graph is looking like this one. Now, whatever result we have found, 1 plus 1 over 2 times x minus 1. 1 plus 1 over 2 times x minus 1. So there is a point of tangency 
that is at one one point that means x1 x1 and y1 is also one so we can see that at this point the square root of x that means this red colored curve and this blue line are looking similar we can see that the graph of the square root of x and this tangent line is almost similar at this point okay so whatever result we will get from this square root of x same result can be found from this function so let us evaluate now the square root of 1.1 so this is our main format that is the square root of x can be approximately equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 times x minus 1. So we can now input 1.1. Our target is to evaluate the square root of 1.1. So it will be 1 plus 1 over 2. In the place of x, we are plugging 1.1. So finally, we will get 1.05 so this is our approximation that is the approximate value of square root of 1.1 if we now use our calculator so using calculator we can also find the value of square root of 1.1 so using our calculator we have 1.04881 so you can see that whatever result we have found that is the good approximation calculator shows us that the result is 1.04 881 but here by using linearization technique we have found 1.05 so this is a good approximation that means whatever process we have applied l of x equals f of x1 plus a prime of x1 times x minus x1 is helpful so this is helping us to evaluate the numerical values we can take a look in another problem so let's say find the linear approximation of f of x equals sine of x at x1 equals zero so let's say this is part a in part B, we have to evaluate sine two degree. To evaluate sine two degree without using calculator, we can use the concept of linear approximation. So the concept of linear approximation, L of X is F of X1, plus a prime of x1 times x minus x1 so f of x is equal to sine of x we need to find f of x1 so f of x1 that is actually y1 is sine of x1 that means where we have x we are just plugging x1 so f of x1 is sine of x1 now first derivative at x1 so f of x is sine of x its first derivative will be cosine of x now first derivative at x1 will be cosine of x1 
so cos x1 and here we have x minus x1 so we can now plug the value of x1 x1 is 0 so sine 0 plus cosine 0 x minus 0 so you know that sine 0 is 0 cosine 0 is 1 and here we have just x so this is x that means the linearization of sine x is x that means we can take a look at the graphs of these two function you can see that the graph of sine of x is looking like this and if we just draw x so you can see that at 0 0 point where x is 0 and y is 0 that means x1 y1 that is the point of tangency is 0 0 so you can see that at 0 0 sine function and x are looking same so whatever result we will get from sine of x same result will be found from this x so sine of x and x is looking similar here so now we can evaluate sine 2 degree at first let us convert this 2 degree to radian we know that 1 degree is pi over 180 radian so 2 degree will be obviously 2 pi over 180 radian that is pi over 90 now sine 2 degree so sine 2 degree can be evaluated from this expression so sine 2 degree means sine pi over 90 so sine pi over 90 is pi over 90 so it is approximately equal to 0 0.0349 so using this expression we have found sine 2 degree or sine pi over 90 radian is 0 0.0349 if we use calculator so we can check that sine pi over 90 that is 0 0.03 4 h995 so we can see that from calculator we have found 0 0.034899 but using the linearization technique we have found 0 0.0349 so again we can see that the linearization technique is giving good approximation so this is the way how we can deal with linear approximation problems. So that's all for today. Thank you.